fire and blood. One argument that I often hear in defense of House of the Dragon is how the story is based on unreliable sources, recorded by biased maesters. Those who raise this argument often do so to point out how the biases of these chroniclers have led to inaccurate details about the characters and the events in the novel, and that therefore the show's writers have every right to make changes to the story wherever they believe that those inaccuracies exist. While I don't entirely disagree with this argument, because Fire and Blood is definitely recorded by biased chroniclers, I don't think that it justifies all of the changes that are made by the show's writers. In fact, I believe that those who make this argument might not fully understand what's biased and open to reinterpretation in the story, and what remains unequivocally true or factual and should not be changed at all. It's because of the nature of the novel, specifically how it is written like a history book, that can make it so tricky to discern between what's likely true and what is biased. However, even though it's difficult to make that discernment, it's not impossible. It's actually important to understand because it can help to clarify between the events that the show's writers are allowed to change and those that are likely to piss off George R. R. Martin. Therefore, in this video, I want to explore the difference between the accounts in the book that are likely factual and those that are biased or open to interpretation. While Fire and Blood is written by a lot of biased sources, it doesn't mean that all of the events in the book are uncertain. There are details in this book that are most likely true or that we can be certain are true because of the way that they are written by the sources. For example, if every source agrees on a specific event, then it is highly likely that the event actually happened. This includes things that are dated, like births, deaths, and marriages, and even major events like coronations or big battles. This is how we know, for example, when the Battle of the Burning Mill occurred, and when Mago the Cruel was coronated in the Starry Sept of Old Town. It is how we can be certain about the births of characters like Alicent or Rhaenyra, and how we know that Rhaenyra was 17 when she married Laenor in 114 AC. These are some of the events that cannot be disputed by the writers of the show, because all of the sources agree on when they happened and how. Also, events that are witnessed by many people, like public executions and tourneys, are things that we can be certain are likely true. These are the type of events that would have too many witnesses to ignore, and that would likely be whispered about for many years to come. The writers cannot change these events because it wouldn't make sense to, given that context. That is why a scene like Rhaenys bursting through the floor during Aegon's coronation doesn't work for the show and leads to many plot holes. There is no way that anyone would have witnessed this and not written about it or whispered about it, especially Green supporters who would have eagerly used it as propaganda against the Black Faction. So public events with lots of witnesses likely happened and the writers should not try to change them at all. Likewise, events that are in a court setting are also probably true and should not be changed. Because most court sessions would have a maester and other witnesses present. Therefore, they would have a lot of people to corroborate what happened during the meeting and it is more likely that the book is accurate about the event. This is how we can be sure that Lucerus met with Lord Baratheon before he died, and that Aemond was there first when he arrived. Therefore, court sessions are likely recorded accurately, and should not be changed too drastically by the writers. Anything that happened in private 
or behind closed doors in fire and blood would have been unknown to the chroniclers and likely recorded inaccurately. There would have been no witnesses to account for these events, so they are likely biased and untrue, which is why a lot of these sources tend to differ and contradict each other about what exactly happened. For example, the secret affair between Renera and Sir Kristen Cole happened behind closed doors. So the chroniclers of the dance differ and contradict one another about what exactly happened between them. Mushroom says that Renera yearned for Sir Kristen Cole and that she took kissing lessons from Damon before she approached him to try and seduce him. However, Mushroom insists that Sir Kristen Cole was a true knight and that he honored his vows. On the day that Renera approached him, he rejected her. But this tale is different from the one that's told by Grand Maester Ronkaita. The Grand Maester says that Renera actually loved her uncle, Damon, and that it was he that took her maidenhead on that night. These two accounts disagree with one another because the event happened behind closed doors, and so they probably didn't see much of what happened. But which version is closer to the truth? Well, this is the part of the story that the writers will need to analyze and use their own discretion for. At the end of the day, both sources acknowledge that Renero is being a little bit promiscuous and that her uncle Damon was somehow involved. In both accounts, those details are consistent with one another. However, the bias creeps in when each source gets into the specifics of what happened as Mushroom tends to present the more lascivious and scandalous version of the tale, while Grand Maester Rankaita is a bit more conservative and serious. The similarities of the story suggest that both of these chroniclers were aware of the event and that it most likely happened, but the way that they each tell it indicates that they're each inserting their own biases and flavors into it. So the writers of the show need to assess the likely biases, character personalities, and other factors around this to determine which version of the event they want to adapt. They cannot deny that the event happened at all, but they can ultimately decide which version of it they believe is closer to the truth. I actually think that the writers did this pretty well in House of the Dragon. Also, the writers can take some liberties as far as character motivations are concerned in certain instances. If you think about it, the chroniclers could not read minds, so they could only speculate about a character's motivations for doing something. The novel says that Aegon the Conqueror married Rhaenys for love and Visenya only for duty, but no one would truly know that but Aegon himself. The sources can only speculate by observing the relationship between Aegon and each of his sisters, evaluating the circumstances, and probably even asking questions whenever they dared. But they cannot fully and truly know what was going on in Aegon's mind. So the writers can take some liberties in that regard, but they need to be careful about how they go about this. Some facts all of the sources agree on. For example, all of the sources agree that Alicent loved her children and that she fought so hard in the war because she wanted to protect her son's claim. Therefore, the writers cannot simply disregard that and add their own motivations which contradict that fact. What they could do is add to that motivation, suggest that Alicent was also being motivated by ruthless ambitions for herself. Maybe she secretly wanted to rule the realm in her son's name or perhaps she wanted to preserve her own position in the small council. The writers could add to such motivations, but they cannot get rid of them. In short, any event that happened in private or which involves a character's motivation is likely biased or open to reinterpretation from the book. But the writers need to be careful enough to approach these changes in a way that is plausible and respectful to the source material. Or at least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section and if you like this video, click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching the video. Peace.